Mm. Uh, that what, what the argument would be from Nick Pope, for example, who also appears on TalkSport, uh, would be that, uh, of course, the MOD aren't hiding anything because they are disclosing information from the National Archive. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. As long as, as, long as everybody's running around in circles looking at UFO reports and they keep running around in these circles and nothing goes any further, that's great. But w what it's about is the protection of petroleum and banking interests. Mm. At the moment, we're currently using 50 and 60s technology uh, in a very modern world and there needs to be a change there needs to be a very dramatic change and uh, hopes are pinned on the current US administration to uh, to really go for it and push some of this new technology that they've been sat on which allegedly Mike uh, for your listeners interest is based on back engineered technology from UFOs uh, and back engineered propulsion research um, and it all makes very interesting uh, very interesting stuff when you start digging around and mm. finding out what's going on now you mentioned uh, abduction earlier yeah. um, you've obviously got knowledge of, of, of people who claim to have been abducted there's yeah. been many books written there's been many documentaries made yeah um, what's your thought about um, people who have been abducted are you of the th of the thinking that rather like you described those who would like to keep us in the dark about all of this I mean are if there are alien forces out there if there are unidentified flying objects if people are being abducted are they all being abducted by the same group of people, if you if you know what I mean, are they yes, all from I one understand. place or are they from very many different places? What? True, we know it's a perplexing argument, uh, Mike. And I've been I've had paranormal experiences, been involved in this for a number of years, and I still can't quite see the full picture. There is an argument that says that alien abductions are hostile, and there is another school of thinking that says alien abductions are not hostile, they're here to actually educate us and it's part of a social integration program. Mm. Uh, and then there's another another kind of school of thinking that says that we are uh, people who channel alien communication and the aliens are here to save us uh, and here to take us off the planet in the event of a global calamity. That certainly is not happening, that certainly wouldn't happen. Uh, but it's the, uh, it's the murky depths of clarifying uh, what they're doing and why they're doing it, not the fact that they exist and don't exist. Right. Uh, and it causes uh, no end of confusion. You can have uh, a top researcher like uh, a guy called Dr. Nick Beglich, for example, uh, or somebody called uh, Derek Jacobs, who is a university professor who wrote a book called The Threat. Uh, and in that, he was indicating that uh, through hypnosis research, he was indicating that these aliens are hostile, blah de blah Then on the other hand, you've got Dr. Stephen Greer of the Disclosure Project telling you that aliens are not uh, hostile and that it's all about uh, educating the human race and pushing humanity to new boundaries. For, as a researcher like myself, Mike, and probably your listeners and, and you, uh, probably wonder what the hell to make of it all, and I currently uh, do wonder just what the, mm. what the hell to make of it all. I mean, if there are, if we take the view that there are aliens around us, if you like, which is certainly what some of the Bulgarian research was suggesting. Yes. Um, uh, have we met them? I mean, would you yes, know? There, there I mean, have you, met, have, you met, have you met an alien? Okay, yeah, well, well there's, some interesting, uh, there's some interesting things going on, uh, Mike, on that, on that score. Um, there is a school of thinking. There, there was a, a gentleman called Robert Dean. He worked in NATO. He did, uh, some people say it was a fraud, some people say it wasn't. He did, NATO did this thing called the assessment, where they assessed what the UFO situation was all about. They discovered what drove them absolutely bananas was the fact that there were people... Uh, human being looking aliens that looked exactly like us, uh, exactly like us, except they were six to seven feet in height. Uh, and there is the strange case of a village in Italy, can't remember the location, uh, where the villagers had uh, had actually encountered these alien people who looked exactly like us and were human in every way, apart from the fact that they were seven to six feet in height. The Italian government pushed it under the carpet or kept very quiet about it. And the illusion with the villagers and these aliens who, who lived underground um, or lived in caves or whatever had come come there had, had continued some people say it's a, it's a hoax some people say it isn't i actually saw a photo of one of these alleged uh, human looking aliens and they they look big guys they, they, they look big you guys. think they would stand out in southern italy yeah, no, or you you couldn't miss one like that the, the, the height of them and there was another photo taken of one of them projecting kind of out of himself into a form of spirits where and they claimed that they came from between spirits and a denser form of, of, of where we are in free dimensions that they came from in between that that zone there mm. the thing what that what surprised me and what was what stuck in my mind when reading that is what the villagers said was that they were more human than what the villagers were 
and they, the villagers felt that humanity had lost their human qualities. Mm. Uh, and that, that, that has been the most profound piece of research that I've read, including stuff to do with Soviet cosmonauts, Mike, who have experienced uh, encounters which have been absolutely wild. Um, and it, that, that's an interesting thing in itself. So, in, so you would go along with what some of the Bulgarian research was showing, which was oh, not absolutely. only are they are they with us and among us, but actually they're rather they're taking sort of a moral high ground stance on many issues and things. Oh, I would so. I would suggest that I would suggest so. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if, the, despite the the efforts of uh, researchers like Dr. Greer, it wouldn't surprise me at another level if if an element of the U.S. government is actually speaking to them because as I've always said, if you're the most powerful military machine on earth, uh, you'd be daft not to uh, mm. communicate with them. And in fact, oddly enough, which I'm uploading at the moment to my YouTube site, there is a government scientist uh, on Whitley Stryber's web um, who did an exclusive interview for Whitley Stryber, and he was absolutely incredible, Mike. Now, he did an exclusive interview. He didn't want to be interviewed by anybody else, but he was a, an eminent government scientist. They had to change his voice. They had to, do, uh, they had to change his name. Uh, and he was, uh, seemingly, they didn't reveal who he was, but he was very eminent, and he had a close encounter uh, experience uh, that was so profound that it affected some quantum physics calculations he was doing but they couldn't comment further on the impact into what scientific field this had impacted in mm. this is probably because people uh, like him are scared of the implications of the controlling group regarding ufos who uh, seem to be lurking in the uh, in the background as but it were. that is the problem isn't it i mean we live in, in in a media age you'd think that if somebody actually you know confirmed that they'd met somebody who was an alien even if you just have a phone with you you can you can record yourself interview somebody yes um or interviewing something yes but there isn't anything around like that yeah well this this is absolutely right i mean there there is the incident oddly enough mike of uh, of london underground the incident you know in the um, in the special forces the, everybody talks about the special air service but really if governments want a quick job doing or a very discreet job doing the british government normally turn to the special boat squadron mm. uh because they they seem to be renowned for uh, for doing things uh, on the quiet there was a story I read, and I don't know whether it's true, just for your listeners' interest, of, a, of an SBS veteran who had been uh, tasked uh, with making an arrest on London Underground uh, to possibly two suspected alien females. Uh, and he he never forgot this incident. I was reading the account of, of what he'd done, and uh, he was deeply shocked by what he saw because they looked distinctly, even though they looked human, there was something about them that wasn't wasn't quite right. I don't know whether that's true, Mike, but it yeah. just makes it interesting. Well, I mean... If you travel as I do on the tube, uh, you see some pretty strange people on it. So uh, I have no idea where they're from in many cases. But Tony, totally, listen, uh, the mystery, I dare say, will go on. But uh, uh, no doubt people could look at your YouTube site and, uh, and see uh, things there for themselves. Where would yeah. you like to direct us there? Yeah, if you, if you go to um, uh, the youtube.com uh, and then it's forward slash Tony Ops UFO. And there's all kinds of exciting interviews on that and all kinds of material that people can have a delve through. All right, Tony, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure, Mike.